They say children of geniuses are not as bright as their parents, but in the next episode of Colors of Asia, you will see that singer Irie from Kazakhstan, director Obit Abdurrahmanov from Uzbekistan, and musician Sohib Nazriev from Tajikistan are not the case. Hello, you're watching Colors of Asia. My name is Gabdur Rashid Budbaev. In previous episodes, we told you about many famous creative families and star couples of our region. Today, we decided to continue the topic of family and talk about the impact of parents on the lives of their children. You often hear that an apple doesn't fall far from a tree. This proverb has a rather negative meaning. But let's look at these words from a different point of view. And it turns out that the apple really falls near the tree. Respectively, children of talented parents continue their path and sometimes in a way even surpass their parents. And today we want to introduce you to such people. In our first story, we will talk about one charming person. She is young, talented and quite ambitious. And her goals may not be big, but still. Many people like this singer because she has a certain authenticity and excellent vocal skills. Therefore, many believe that soon she will make herself known far beyond the borders of Kazakhstan. Godspeed, as they say. I would like to add that this singer was greatly influenced by her parents' work as a person. They were her first idols. I realize that it's very close to my heart, that I feel very comfortable on stage. And literally from school I felt that I should be on stage. From the age of five, she had the aspiration and desire to be a singer, which I, of course, suppressed and said, no, it's not necessary. What for? It's complicated. You cannot do it. But in the end, her strong character broke through. I always told her, go for it. She made her first recordings at my studio. I always allowed her to try herself. I was always positive on this topic. I always wanted her to be on stage. From the age of five, when we had the opportunity to show concerts and performances of some artists, I always did it. She was always with us. It's no coincidence that we decided to tell you about the singer Agirim Rakishova, who is better known as Airi. The fact is that today she is favorably different from many of her colleagues in show business. Airi is Airi. She is one of a kind. This is a real singer and it's impossible to confuse her with anyone else. Of course, any artist strives for the best, wants to improve every time. And in five years that I've been iry, I realized that no singing technique, no fancy dress, no cool video will save you if there is no heart, if there is no energy that you must project to the world sincerely. I understood that. And by the way, these words were once said to me by my parents. Trends are constantly changing, but one thing remains is the heart. Yes, you need to be able to sing with your heart, sincerely. And I realize that I will never lose if I move in this direction. At first, no one believed in this project. Those singers with whom I worked as a director even tried to talk me out of it, saying, Ruslan, it will be hard for you, you shouldn't do this. Work with a singer who is ready. But I had such a desire, I believed in it. And then Irie believed it too. The whole team supported us, and three years later, on the contrary, they began to praise us, telling that they were wrong and that this is great. In general, producer Ruslan Abdekaliyev deserves some credit. He understood that it would be unfair not to help such a talent as Ayri.
Before that, I worked as an organizer of events and big concerts. For about seven, eight years, I was the director of Ulitao Band, singers such as Madina Sadvakasova, Vibut Korhan, Khadrali Bolmanov, Karakhat Abildina. Sambat Rakishev was my first teacher in this area. And in 2005, when we met, I first saw Agirim at the studio. She was so young, only 14 years old, I think. And I said, she's so talented, I was like her older brother. We grew up, I was busy with my bands, she grew up. And I saw that none of the producers paid attention to her. She was so talented, but no one noticed. And I, as an older brother, decided to help. Then I found a partner, Akhlas Nugmetov. He's a great musician. And together with him, we decided to become her producers. How can I not trust this man if he practically grew up in front of my eyes? In general, the results are good now. They might be slow, but they go up. Over the past few years, Iri has conquered the Kazakh audience with her style of performance, sincerity, skill, charisma, determination, and fortitude. She has everything that is needed for a real star, a world-class star. Our team, of course, is very strong. I can say that for sure, because it takes a lot of strength to go through such a difficult, thorny path in the last five, six years, when there were such cases that we were simply taken off from the concert lists and TV programs. There were a lot of difficulties in the first two or three years, but we're going strong. Probably it's because we trust each other. We are completely immersed in our music and creativity. And personally, for me, Iris' project became a success. Honestly, I would say I've been as Iris for five years now. The first year I was at Yirim Rakishova. We tried to find a repertoire since it's very difficult for the singer to find her own composer, her own direction. So the audience will also enjoy it. Naturally, back then I was young and inexperienced. Now I can say that I found my own way, I found my direction. Now doors are opening to the US and we often go abroad. And everything is fine. <laughs> Iri grew up in a musical family. Her dad is a musician composer Sambat Rakishev. Her mother, Aliya Rakisheva, a professional singer who came into prominence in the middle of 1990s. But over time, her presence on stage, for some reasons, faded away, and many people still regret it because very few singers have such a powerful voice. And apparently, Iri inherited such a beautiful voice from her mother. Her voice is similar to her mother's. Alia's voice, of course, is more powerful, but I think this is a matter of age. Since childhood, I witnessed how my parents gave big concerts in the city of Simei. I know that my mother is the winner of many competitions and that at that time she was one of the brightest singers. We watch YouTube videos. From what I see, I understand that I still have to grow to the level of my parents. I really admire their professionalism. You know, I left the stage early, and I know it's a lot of work. This requires, first of all, strength of character and hard work. But to my delight, my daughter has these qualities. That's what I don't have. I'm a lazy person. I realized on time that singing on stage are not something I would like to do, and I left the stage. At first, when she first came on stage as Iri, there was a lot of criticism from me. 
She frankly was afraid, because I told her, if you don't have what it takes, don't do it. If you want to be there, then you need to be among the firsts. It's not a good idea to be there just to be among the crowd of other singers. And now I completely trust her. I see that she's already a professional. She teaches as well. I see that she has a great achievement. She's natural on stage. This affects both her vocal skills and her character. I see these qualities, so I only support her. Irie is a participant of various competitions and festivals. It became a norm that at the end of a project, at least, she's in the top three. This is the platform where I can show my entire range, everything I want. But I can't say that there are songs in my repertoire where I can really show the Western style. The direction that I usually listen to. But I want to thank this Western direction. It helped me find my own timber for the experience, for the improvisation for the fact that I can already see how I should sing the song. My own songs, of course. I can't say they are easy, they are pretty complicated. But this direction, I call it iry, it's pretty much up to date. And it seems to me that everything sounds great. One day, Irie had the idea to open her own vocal school, and she managed to do it. I really like teaching because my mother is also a vocal teacher. Of course, I took a lot from her. At first, she advised me how to conduct a lesson. I myself saw this, since lessons were always at home. And now I believe that I'm pretty good at teaching. I teach both at my school and at the Tchaikovsky Republican College. I have my own students. I'm really glad that I can pass it on, that I can motivate young people since they are the future. Our next hero is a creative person to the core. His name is well known not only in his native country. For three years he has been a director of the youth theater of Uzbekistan. And before that, for a long time, he was an actor in the same theater. He first came on stage when he was eight years old. By the way, it's no coincidence that the youth theater of Uzbekistan was chosen by our hero. This is a family tradition because his father was the artistic director in this very theater for 27 years. Of course, his son fell in love with the theatrical art too. Parents become role models for their children from the moment of their birth. Their lifestyle, behavior, manners have a great influence on the formation of children as individuals, and they want to learn the professional qualities of adults. Actually, this theater is my home. I always call it home because I have been here since my childhood. I've been running around this very hall, and I couldn't even talk yet. I didn't stay with my grandmother. I stayed here while my parents were at rehearsals. Children of creative people often follow in the footsteps of their parents. This is probably because they grow in a certain atmosphere. Directing is a much more complicated profession than acting, in my opinion. My parents and my sister are directors, but it didn't work out for me. I gravitate to acting, and from the whole family, probably I'm the only one who is self-confident. The director is behind the scenes, he watches, and I hate feeling at the premiere when you can't do anything. 
While the rehearsal process is underway, everything depends on you. Light, sound, sets, and actors. But at the premiere itself, while the performance is going on for one and a half, two, three hours, you have absolutely nothing to do. You're just standing there and feeling nervous, looking at the stage, and you have nothing to do with yourself. I would rather play for everyone a thousand times, go on stage, than be nervous like this. Because actors do not worry when they are on stage, they do their job. At the Youth Theatre of Uzbekistan, Obid proved to everyone that he's one of a kind, bright, charismatic, multifaceted actor. Spectators fell in love with the characters that were created by him. They were highly appreciated by both Uzbek and foreign critics. Что касается актерства, ну у меня, слава богу, много интересных разноплановых ролей. Из самых любимых это, наверное. As for acting, thank God, I have a lot of interesting, diverse roles. One of the most beloved are probably Nasreddin in the production of the first love of Hoja Nasreddin. This is based on Timur Zulfikarov's work. This man was nominated for the Nobel Prize for the new style he invented. If you haven't read it, read it. This is really a phenomena in the world of literature. It's precisely about the fact that Nasreddin would not have become Nasreddin as we know him if it wasn't for his first love, a unique first love that happened to him. Our performance is staged in the genre of modern show, but at the same time it's a high poetry. I really love this performance. This was my first major role in an adult play. They say about Abid Abdurrahmanov that already in his first roles he revealed a wide range of his creative capabilities. Vivid expressiveness of the inner world of his characters makes the images memorable, and he established himself as a director too. Carl Jung said that actors and indeed people of art are peculiar prophets because their transcendental function of transferring from the unconscious to the conscious is more developed than in other people. Roughly speaking, people of art simply feel where humanity is going. Their main goal is to warn humanity about where it goes. And I did not put a sensitive social topic in the tormented apostle, some kind of political one, at its center. It was on the background. Things that happened in the story itself were at the center. It was about a small family and a great evil appeared inside it. A child finally becomes a tyrant. The entire stage set is on fire at the end, the faces of Hitler and Mussolini. Because of the little lies of his parents, he learns how to lie. This is the most important thing, is that a little lie gives birth to a big one. This production was a great success. People talked about it a lot. At the festival in St. Petersburg, the director of the Gorky Russian Drama Theater, which is located in the capital of Kazakhstan, was simply impressed after seeing this performance. Once he saw it, he wanted me to stage the play at their theater. And this was my first play not only at that theater, but abroad. I had to prepare it within a month. I was young and all the actors were older than me, except two girls. The main actor was older than me, although he had to play a boy. Everyone was older than me. This is a cherished project because it was the first one and because I was at a very good theater, I worked with kind people. I was worried, I was nervous. When the audience gave a standing ovation at the end, I was stunned. Before we present you with the next story, I would like to remind you that all episodes of Colors of Asia are available on the official website of Kazakh TV and on its YouTube channel. And the name of our next hero from Farsi translates as owner. They say that among Tajiks it's very popular and is considered noble. The father of this young man is a well-known musician in Tajikistan who has glorified the greatness of folk instruments and folklore for many years. I must say that the son not only followed in the footsteps of his father, but strengthened and increased family values, that is skill and talent. And today he's one of the most popular singers and musicians in this wonderful country.
Different eras interwine in an ordinary house in the center of Dushanbe. Here, a popular Tajik singer and musician Sahib Nazrif rehearses in the family museum. His father Ismail and grandfather Abdullah played on similar ancient musical instruments. Music always played in our house. I think it was in my blood. I did not go to music school, and after graduating from a regular high school, I went to study as a lawyer. Since childhood, I wanted to work in the field of law. My father wanted me to follow in his footsteps, but I insisted on my own path. He didn't mind, saying he respected my choice. After graduating from the university, I worked for five years. But what was in my genes in the end won. I came back to music. Ismail and Abdullah Nazrifs are known by everyone who appreciates classical national music in Tajikistan. Abdullah Nazrif, прежде всего надо сказать, конечно, это величайший мастер. Sahib's grandfather Abdullah Nazrif is the greatest master. He's the major star of our traditional music. He performed both falak and makom. Sahib Nazrif is a young performer beloved in Tajikistan. Audience loves his songs. He is a representative of musical family that has done a lot for folk music. When Ismail Nazrif sings, the soul of Tajik nation is embedded in it. You can hear sufferings and aspirations of Tajik people in his voice. Sahib carries on a tradition. But he produces this musical tradition according to new trends. He looks for something modern, using new technical capabilities we have now in music. But the most important thing he continues on, a direction his great-grandfather and his father set. He doesn't change it much. He uses national Tajik music as a foundation in his work. It's great, and that's why people are fond of his work, because we have such a great love for traditional music. At first, so he performed in his father's band. After gaining experience, he decided to start a solo career. Choosing lyrics for his works, he mainly turns to the work of Tajik classics. As for his music, it has more modern sound. Sahib himself plays the guitar, piano, the national string and percussion instruments. Of course, I follow the music school of my grandfather and father, but I want to introduce novelty to my melodies. I want to find my own style, my own direction, which will differ from others. I still want to improve my musical skills and want to graduate from an art institute where I can get a professional education. Sohib Nazrif is a versatile person. In addition to his career as a singer and musician, he works on one of the most popular radio channels in the country. And today, Sahib invited the crew of Colors of Asia program to his office and allowed us to observe the working process here. Working on the radio as the editor-in-chief of music programs, I am involved in making background music for programs, the selection of video clips, audition of participants in various castings, tracking new artists. In any case, I need to constantly monitor music premieres as well as develop various concert programs and shows. The state radio now also plays author songs performed by Sahib Nazrif himself. As they say, Sahib lives and breathes music and poems of the great Tajik poets, classics. Every song that Sahib writes in the folk genre or pop genre comes from the heart. He carefully approaches lyrics and music. When I was appointed as the radio's director and I found out that Sahib was working as a musical editor, I felt secure about music. I was sure that music of different genres and different times would sound on the radio, since we have a wide audience. And I was not mistaken, Sahib has a great musical taste.
Students of the National Conservatory are lucky as well as the radio listeners. They are taught by Ismail Nazriyev himself. He shares his experience and knowledge with young people, shares secrets he once learned from his legendary father. If someone asks me when I started singing, I'd say I don't know. I've been singing my whole life for more than half a century. I think this is a long time. It's a happiness for me. You're lucky to live your creative life like this. I sing and I can also pass it on to my students. The folk song exists in many places, when people walk to and out of the field, when they worked, when they raised their children, held weddings and other festive ceremonies. Really, there is a soul in each song, in each song the fate of a man, the fate of people. Audiences' national roots come to life, as if they are waking up. I am happy that I can be a small piece of the musical treasury of the Tajik nation. I can promote folk songs. From 2004 to this day, I have been teaching at the Tajik National Conservatory named after Talabhoja Satorov. I always tell my students that a singer will achieve success when he can compose and sing, when he puts his soul into a song. This great man has raised more than one generation of students. Young people are very happy to study national classical music with him. Therefore, as the master says, he feels secure about the future and is confident that the work of his ancestors will live. This school is different from others. It is based at the junction of two national directions, Makom and Falak. I really want to become a professional performer of folk traditional songs and in the future, as my maestro Ismail Nazriyev, to sing and teach the younger generation subtleties of Tajik musical art. Over the year, under the leadership of my mentor Ismail Nazriyev, I have been learning the basics of Tajik national singing. I am very interested in both songs of mountain regions and the performance of songs from the repertoire of the classical musical treasury of Shashmakom. There is always music in Nazriyev's house. When the family gets together, everyone sings. Sohib called his son Hafiz. It's no coincidence because this name carries a special meaning – performer of a traditional music. My father is a sincere man. He is an open person and he expresses his thoughts very candidly and clearly. He generally likes to say, you should always tell the truth. He doesn't tolerate dishonesty in any form, from out of tune notes to hypocrisy in people's relations. It doesn't matter to him who exactly he's talking to at the moment, an official or a plumber. He's always humble man. He doesn't talk much, but he does a lot and he's very friendly. Perhaps this is why his students, colleagues and friends love him. I think that today there is no such person who hasn't heard at least one of the songs perfectly sung by my father. They enter every house in the hearts of the listeners. He always sings about homeland, love, joy and hope of our people. He is an example for me, not only in the performing arts, but also in everyday life. The way he takes the stage, playing musical instruments, he always supports me in everything. He is my rock, my teacher and my ideal. Dear friends, we are about to finish our today's program. See you soon. You have watched Colors of Asia. Goodbye.